pregnancy, there are a lot of changes that impact uh, how the lung works and how the upper airway works. So the upper airways become a little bit narrower during pregnancy, and with pregnancy complications, they might be even a little more narrow. And with the uterus increasing in size and pushing the diaphragm, which is the breathing muscle, up towards the chest, that might also impact the volumes of the lung. And a lot of these factors may impact how women uh, have, like how much oxygen reserve they have during sleep. And some of these changes may impact how sleep disordered breathing happens. But there are also some hormonal changes that happen which uh, also impact uh, breathing during sleep. Some of them may protect against sleep disordered breathing and some of them may be predisposing to sleep disordered breathing. So far we know that sleep apnea is definitely one of the risk factors for preeclampsia. And preeclampsia is a condition where the woman develops high blood pressure and proteins in the urine or some other systemic dysfunction as well. And it's also been associated independently with gestational diabetes, which is diabetes that happens during pregnancy. Those are the two outcomes that are the most studied and the most consistently uh, uh, shown or uh, examined. But there are some other outcomes as well, more severe outcomes like uh, congestive heart failure, cardiomyopathy, even admissions to the intensive care unit, a need for a hysterectomy, cesarean delivery, so plenty of other outcomes. And there are some outcomes of uh, the neonate as well that have been associated with sleep disordered breathing. Those have been a little more controversial, but it seems like preterm uh, labor or preterm birth is certainly associated with sleep disordered breathing breathing as well. So there's a lot of things and many of them are quite severe so uh, they're really important to look at. This is something that's really interesting to look at but we haven't really looked at it yet. So we know indirectly through the association of sleep disordered breathing and preeclampsia and gestational diabetes, these two outcomes, so preeclampsia has been associated with long-term cardiovascular health, uh, where women that do develop sleep apnea, uh, I'm sorry, preeclampsia during pregnancy, uh, compared to women who don't develop it, are at a higher risk for developing adverse cardiovascular outcomes. So the association of sleep disordered breathing indirectly may be linked to these long-term cardiovascular outcomes, but we don't know if it adds to that risk or if it's the cause to that risk yet. We haven't looked at that yet. And in terms of the gestational diabetes, we know that gestational diabetes increases the risk of type 2 diabetes and metabolic outcomes later in life. So the risk is about seven times as high. So again, that association with sleep disordered breathing and gestational diabetes, might there might be a link there towards long-term cardiovascular and metabolic health. But again, that's not very well studied yet. Here's another area that's not well studied. So we assume that just like outside of pregnancy, CPAP might be able to treat uh, OSA and it might impact how uh, sleepy women are or how well they're feeling uh, in terms of quality of life. We don't know whether CPAP um, does these things yet. So there are some very small case series that show that yes, women do improve that way, but we don't know if treating with CPAP impacts any of these pregnancy related outcomes that we talk about. But so when we have someone who has at least severe uh, sleep apnea or moderate sleep apnea, who is symptomatic and needs to be treated, we are treating them through pregnancy. In a way, we're hoping that we get the same outcomes that we get outside of pregnancy, but we need a lot of studies in that area as well, and those studies are still lacking. A lot of the, the mechanisms behind the association of sleep disordered breathing and these you know, big outcomes that we talked about, like preeclampsia and gestational diabetes, they may actually be impacted by pregnancy hormones and by specific uh, situations in pregnancy and the pathways may not be the same as they are outside of pregnancy. And then the timing of development of sleep apnea may also impact how these outcomes are happening. So um, we don't know what these are. And if we can identify, say, that inflammation is one of the important pathways, then what if we treated inflammation or we tried to prevent inflammation from happening? What if we could impact these pregnancy associated outcomes? We don't know that. So now we're assuming that just treating the upper airway and keeping the upper airway patent might improve these things, but there might be ways that 
um, may be better. And then if we find that oxidative stress, for instance, is another major mechanism, which it may not be, maybe if we intervene to modify these areas, we might be able to change outcomes for these women. Mm -hmm.